Hi, this is Johnny Mnemonic and in today's tutorial we're gonna be uh, setting up mental array car render for the ultimate photorealistic result. Now this is how the teaser looked like, which uh, some of you may have seen. Okay, we got metallic black paint and silver. Some motion blur. This is done in After Effects with the uh, plugin RS motion blur nothing complicated I don't even need to teach that so that's it I'm gonna open up my project and run the settings through okay I got car I got four mental array sky portals and stuff like that but I can remove those and uh, so I can run this again. Hit M, open up material editor. Now you may have uh, some car model, some free model, or free model or something like that, for which this tutorial is going to be very useful because the, in case of most uh, free models, you have to retexture them and work on them a little bit to make them look a little nicer. Or you can buy, of course, models which costs around hundred and two hundred dollars so that's also an option if you got money okay so first thing we want to be sh make sure we are working linear so we go to customize preferences gamma and load and enable gamma load correction and set the values to 2.2 now uh, to find out more about linear workflow check my bubbles tutorial which you can find on my channel okay next we go to rendering environment bitmap load bitmap again it can be any bitmap but I like to use HDRIs now I don't need to tell you where to find HDRIs now use images on gamma in this case and that's it and now you need to get uh, the environment into material editor so click on some empty slot if you got one or override some other material get material scroll down here you will find scene materials now this also works for max 10 or I think uh, all versions of Max, and there you just find your environment which is here double click and it will appear here make sure the texture mapping is set to spherical environment yeah the reason why we are doing this is you can move or tile the environment here and it will essentially affect uh, what is your car paint reflecting so it gives you a little more freedom okay next thing we want to create a plane where the shadows will be cast and create a material for the plane now we're going to be using matte shadow reflection which is a mental ray a matte shadow material double click and since this material is black and it affects uh, all the colors in the scene and especially reflections and refractions and we don't want that go to object properties untick visible to reflection and refraction and uh, drag it on your plane now of course you can set this material color to any color you like but uh, we only want our shadows to be cast and then if you save your sequence or render as a PNG it will stay transparent and it will block the environment from the edges of the soft shadows so that's pretty much it now next thing lights we are using mental array sky portal draw a shape move the light in your scene rotate it now again I'm not uh, saying you have to do it precisely like I am doing it yeah. uh, graphics it's about testing yeah, you just make some settings, adjustments, hit F9, check how it's looking, then go back, readjust, hit F9, 
and so forth and so forth. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay, this looks pretty okay. It's kind of dark. Yeah, I like it. Now, in the original example, I used four mental ray sky portal lights, but like I said, this depends on you and uh, on the result you want to achieve. Yeah, so maybe put one like this. So now, one important thing I've seen that in a tutorial where. Uh, someone was scaling the light with the scale tool. Now this doesn't do anything. Okay, you if you want to scale your light, you have to go to modifier panel and scale it uh, in a modifier panel. Okay, because uh, if you use scale tool, the only thing it does it scales the geometry, but not the actual light parameters. If you can notice. It doesn't do anything here and that's important yeah because the field of this light this is essentially representation of the field from which the light is going to be emitted and this is obviously the direction so if you want to create some kind of a spotlight like illusion yeah, you make the light smaller and if you want a big light just above the car you can make it huge and so again this is up to you play with it and try to get result go to advanced parameters tick custom because otherwise the light won't give you any light that's also important and you adjust the light intensity with multiplier and uh, shadow samples now that hugely affects your rendering time the more shadow samples you're gonna set, the better quality the soft shadows are gonna have. Now again, for sake of rendering, you can be somewhere in the 16 to 32 area. But of course, if you have six processors computer, you can set thousands of samples. Yeah, that's, that's another point I've seen people complaining about uh, hard edges and renders of other youtubers but hey guys it's for sake of you know saving your self a headache and time because it makes a huge difference if you render one frame of your animation for 25 minutes or five minutes okay so that's and since we are not uh, some large Hollywood studio and render farm is hugely expensive we gotta set our sampling accordingly that's the whole thing okay so now I don't know which model of car you have but uh, you can retexture it one way to do it is just uh, overwrite all, all materials and just drag it onto your model but if your model is organized uh, then the best way to do it is, for example, if I click on this uh, ch chassis, I go to object properties and there I see material name which is assigned onto this object. So I just go back and find a material in the material editor. Okay, so it works like that. Okay, so click the material and type car paint. Now this car paint material is also in Max 10 as far as I know. Now I don't need to drag this material over since uh, it will automatically update since it's already assigned. Okay, we want to let's say we want a black color. Black is nice and we got to switch light facing color to white because in reality if light or sunlight is hitting black car you notice it has these white uh, white spots flake flakes these are those are those metallic flakes and I may want to set their weight to a little less or you can do you know insanely flaked material but I think 
0.5 and these settings you can safely leave default and that's what I'm talking about hit F9 test your work and if you don't like it go back readjust like I said it's up to you now I am running this on sampling one quarter to four I think which is low quality but uh, yeah, it renders one image uh, reasonably time wise okay so this is the result you're gonna get yeah. you can adjust the light facing color make it darker if you make it black the hood will like I show I show you the hood of course go dark like so okay this may be even nicer but I'm not saying this is necessarily realistic and this car paint material is pretty much ready to go yeah, it's included it's it's an autodesk material so that's the car paint yeah if you want try silver you try different different colors and you can get there next material is going to be is going to be windows window material glass material now for for this uh, render window glass it's clear glass now for this render i used autodesk solid glass which again comes in max 13 i think this may not be solution for max 10 but you can do similar material with arch and design glass material which i show you later but type in autodesk glass oh, sorry autodesk solid glass double click and uh, the only catch here is just setting the reflectance okay refraction you can leave it like this and uh, now the more reflectance you're gonna set the more tinted the glass will look like okay so if I crank it up insanely this is what's gonna happen as you can see it uh, it looks very heavily tinted and it reflects the whole HDRI now these car paint materials and glass and all the good stuff is very it's very rendering heavy yeah so takes a while yeah, but I can see now we got this yeah I think you get the idea it's just for representation okay so I'm gonna set it somewhere like four or five may may be okay and uh, you just uh, safely leave all the other attributes default yeah okay so next material we want to do is, uh, is those headlights and tail lights materials now for the tail lights I used arch and design and again just click the materials and go arch and design select template use glass thin geometry Go to color, set it to red, and uh, set the refraction color to red as well, with lighter, and uh, set the BRDF to custom, 
or maybe even by index of refraction. Now what I used in uh, the silver example, I used custom reflectivity function and to crank it a little bit down and it gave me something like this. Okay, so this is what I got from the test render. It took a while and I like it. I like it a lot. But if you want to introduce uh, a little more red, you either go back to index uh, to reflection by the index of refraction or you just simply crank the reflectivity under zero degree angle lower. Okay, so that's uh, that's the idea. You can leave it. And I just demonstrate. If you do it by index of refraction, yeah, it introduces uh, back the red, and it will be a lot uh, less reflective, essentially making the tail light look a little plasticky. But uh, hey, it's up to you. Okay, so I hope you get the idea. So this is how can you create a glass now. Again, the te uh, front blinkers. I don't think I need to tell you what to do with these. It's the same principle. Arch and design. Okay. Uh, diffuse color, refraction color to orange. And again, play with BRDF. So, those were the lights, and the next thing is going to be the metal for the rims, and uh, stuff like that. So again, I'm using Autodesk Metal, which is a preset that comes with 3D Max. I want to, and it to be Chrome, and I want satin, and uh, here I just uh, enable ambient occlusion and again yeah, the way you can find your material is either drag it over on all of the four rims or if you got model that is organized already just find which material is assigned now obviously this model is organized everything is uh, described but if you got a model that uh, doesn't have descriptions in materials and just numbers, here you can find out which one it is. So that's essentially the metal material. And uh, yeah, it's that easy. Now last thing you want to create is the leather for the interior. And again, that's also a piece of cake. You just, uh, I got it here, again, yeah, either create a new material, or then, okay, go to Arch and Design, select the template, and, uh, where it is, yeah, here, leather, now by default, you know, it makes this uh, kind of luxurious uh, reddish, color and uh, the way you can change that since is since uh, the color is mapped on noise just uh, sorry just click the color and uh, change it change it to your liking yeah it's that easy so that's pretty much all of it i hope uh, this tutorial has been useful and uh, I cannot stress enough, it's about testing. Yeah, adjust the settings, create light, hit F9. If you don't like it, readjust, go back and forth and play with it. You can do it for one hour, or you can do it for a week. And if you've done this 100 times, then your next renders, hey, you're gonna be finished in 10 minutes. Like uh, in this tutorial, nearly 10 maybe a little over but hey okay this has been johnny mnemonic and uh, bye